Sarah's still sleeping. Hello, and welcome to Tackett's House of Horsepower. It's me, Steve Tackett, and uh, I got a lot of work to do in the garage this weekend. But uh, before I can do that, it's important, no, imperative, that I start my day off right with a healthy, nutritious, well-balanced breakfast. You know, it's in order for me to power through my day and get everything done that needs to get done. So uh, I'm gonna walk you through that real quick and uh, just show you how we get things done around here. Okay, first I start with like, uh, I don't know, whatever that is, pound, get yourself a pound of bacon, you know, the applewood smoke, thick ones, you know what I mean, the big thick ones, get those ones. Get yourself some uh, buttermilk biscuits, here we go. Slap that on there. Yes, I put aluminum foil on my non-stick cookie sheets because I don't want to have to clean it later, okay? Bacon's going. Got the biscuits going. Oh yeah, and start the coffee pot. We need that. That's that's important. All right, once you got all your bacon cooked, I mean, mine is cooked. Hers is ruined. This is what you should love. This is, this is Sarah's. This is... This is what normal people would want. So I don't. That's a big debate in my house. I don't. What do you think? You, you you like them ruined? I mean crispy or you know normal? What do you think? Anyways, next the fun begins. Some flour and just start dumping it in. There's no particular measurements here. We just kind of wing it, you know what I mean? Start mixing in flour. Okay, so I keep adding milk until I get it nice, the, the consistency, you know what I mean? The consistency you want, and there you go. And then I put a little bit of pepper in that, and now we got ourselves good old fashioned biscuits and gravy. And uh, to be dead honest with you, I have no idea what I'm doing. I literally just wing this every time. <laughs> I uh, I can never, ever, ever get it right. I have never been able to master this. At least not like Granny Tackett. Granny Tackett used to make this perfect every time. And it was so good. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what she did differently, but I could never get it right. So if you... If you notice anything I did wrong, let me know because uh, I need some tricks. I don't. I, I need to figure this out. One of these days, I will make it as good as Granny Tackett. Come here. Come here. You want some bacon? <laughs> I think they like bacon. Can you shake? Good boy. Can you shake? No. Shake. Shake, give me that. Shake. Sit. There you go. There you go. He's drooling everywhere. <laughs> and there you go. See that? Now the key here is portion control. You, you don't want to overdo it. You know, you, you got you got you got a lot of work to do today. So you wanna make sure you don't overdo it at breakfast. You know, a nice, healthy, lean, light, well-balanced, nutritious breakfast is key. All right, now that I can't feel my left arm, it's time to do some work. So I was thinking I would start on the front clip get the front clip put together today. That's what I was gonna 
work on this weekend and I thought about it and I thought, wait, that's a stupid idea. Like I said, I was going to put the front clip on and then I thought better of it because I've got a lot of work to do on the firewall. Um, master cylinder, booster, electrical, windshield wipers, steering column, brake lines, all kinds of stuff. Uh, emergency brake cable, all kinds of stuff needs to go in this corner right here. And if I put the front clip on now, then uh, I'd be getting ahead of myself. And uh, then I'd have the fender and the inner fender and the hood and everything would be in the way. So I think the smart thing to do would be to work on this firewall and uh, see if I can fill up some of these holes you see here. And uh, that way it's a lot easier to get to everything without the front clip in the way. So the internet and uh, social media is probably like a contributing factor to the downfall of mankind but it does have some some good redeeming qualities um so i posted on my chevelle page one of my pages i follow on facebook that i was missing a bunch of parts on my driver door here since it got repaired and bob straightened it out I am missing all the mechanisms and door lock and the rods and the uh, handle mechanism that goes right there. You know what I mean? And the rod that connects that. So I posted on the Chevelle page and I said, hey man, I posted this picture. I'll post the picture. I posted this picture and I said, hey, I'm missing these parts. And a pretty cool dude named Travis said, hey man, I got it. So he pulled it off and sold it to me. So that's that's one good thing about Facebook and stuff like that is you can meet people and uh, you can get help on your project if you need it. And uh, somebody else has it or, you know what I mean? They can send it to you or you can find all kinds of stuff on there. So I can put my driver door together today too. All right, take a look at this. Watch this. Oh. Oh, ho, ho. look at that. Oh my God. Watch, we'll even open it from the inside. Get you down here. Oh yeah. Look at that. So big thank you to Travis who sent me those parts. And uh, so as of right now, all the windows and doors function as they should they open and close they roll up and down everything's good so uh other than door locks and trunk locks and ignition so what i'll do is i'll just order a kit this week or something and i'll get uh i'm gonna get a list going and uh put put in my first big order so i'll just get a whole lock cylinder kit so everything matches for this right here this guy but uh cool man appreciate that now we got a functioning door if you'd have seen this door if you go back and look at the original videos <laughs> if you saw this door before the fact that it opens and closes that smoothly is uh pretty amazing i'm happy with it all right enough playing around let's get started on this firewall i got uh emergency brake cables i got a master cylinder and uh booster proportioning valve kit. Um, I also have an old line lock. We're gonna put the put a line lock in line on the front brakes. So I need to mount that somewhere. And then I gotta make a bunch of brake lines. So yeah, plenty to do. Emergency brake cable is in. And you can see what I mean. Like if there was an inner fender and fender right here, that would've been really difficult to get to, but we got it. I put some uh, WD-40 in here because that thing was stiff. But there you go, e-brake installed. Now for my next trick, I'm going to attempt 
to install power brakes and uh, master cylinder and proportion valve. It looks like uh, I need to remove the stock rod there. It looks like it comes with its own. So uh, we'll have to get that in there and set my adjustment up and stuff. But uh, that's what we're doing. Okay, I got the, uh, the old brake pedal rod and stuff out of the way. And it looks like I was a little nervous about going with a power brake booster on here with tall valve covers, but it looks like I'm gonna be good. If I can get that on the pedal. You gotta get that on the pedal on the inside. And I'll just get a nut on here and get it started to kind of hold it for me. The trick is you want that rod, you gotta set that up for like what we would call zero lash. You don't want that pedal, that rod, to have any pressure on it at all, none. You don't want it pushing on the, on the back of it at all. So you wanna adjust that rod to where you just barely make contact with it without putting any pressure. So get these bolts started. And I'm gonna have to fish two of them in from the, from the inside. I might as well get Sarah to help me. Okay. Oh yeah, we got clearance. Not much, but we got a little bit, about yay. So I should be able to get this valve cover on and off. That'll work. Let me get two more bolts and fish them in there. I might as well get Sarah to help me. Okay, all right, babe, I need help. About time you admit it. Uh, <laughs> that's disrespectful. <laughs> um, I'm gonna fish these bolts in from the on the top here, and you put those nuts on and tighten it down. Don't knock over the camera. Oh yeah, you're being recorded, so don't say anything naughty. Right. Can you see the hole? Mm-hmm. Can you see the hole? No. <laughs> Go down. I don't, I can't. You know what? I already tightened the, these two might be a little too tight. I can't move it around. I, I thought I left them loose, but. to wiggle it you can lift up or down or whatever You're gonna need this. okay let's try that again well can you get it it's in i gotta yeah. Okay. Um, let me try. Let me try the other one. Can you lift it up or down? It, look, so. it looks like it's lined up right there. Go. 
Yeah, right there. Is it in? No. Almost. That's as close as it's gonna be. Maybe. Can you get another one? No. Well. You gotta come out farther. I'm having trouble reaching it. Tighten the top two first. Which one are you going to do first? Top, my left. This one? No. I can't now. Yeah. Okay. No. Am I on? Hold on. Are you going the right way? No. Never. You tighten it. Okay. Now which one? I know. Go. I can't do that. That's as tight as I can get it. Okay. Now which one? That's it. I can do it now. Okay. So much for your help. I always, appreciate it. Always here to help. Okay. Now go back inside. <laughs> no. Your services are no longer needed. <laughs> That's a lie. Take a look. That's what I was worried about there is this gap. I've got more than a finger's gap there, but taking that valve cover on and off was gonna be kind of my worry. All right, so there you have it. This is the CPP, no, I'm not getting paid. Trust me. CPP kits, um, disc brake front end that I bought, kit thingy that I bought. Anyway. The, uh, originally this car had a single piston master cylinder with one brake line that came out of it and it went down to this distribution block and it came in the top right there. And then the front left, front right, and rear brakes all used to get fed off of one brake line. Well, 
that's fine in 1964, but today it's they came up with much, something much better, and that's the dual feed or dual piston master cylinder with a proportioning valve. So now what you got to do is you can use that same distribution block, just block off where the rear brakes used to go, block that off. And then you're gonna take this brake line and we're gonna bend it and point it towards the up. And then we'll come out and it's gotta tie in to the back of the proportioning valve. And then the front of the proportioning valve, wow, it's really hard to point at stuff <laughs> looking at it through the phone. Okay, so the front of the proportioning valve, we'll run that down to, oh, sorry. We're gonna run that down to a solenoid for the line lock somewhere. We'll mount it somewhere on the firewall somewhere. And then, uh, so the front is gonna feed through that solenoid and then into the front brakes. So what that means is with the newer modern proportioning valve, the dual setup like this, 90%, about 90% of the front gets all the all the pressure and the rear only does about 10% of the work anyways. They figured out a long time ago that this the original setup was kind of dangerous because if you have to like panic stop or hit the brakes real hard, the uh, all, if all of the all four corners get the same amount of pressure, the uh, when you really hit the brakes hard, the uh, the rear brakes can lock up because the car dips forward so much. All the weights on the front tires, so the back tires will lock up and you lose control of the car and you go spinning and doing circles and you know what I mean you end up wrapped around a telephone pole. So. Somebody came up with this setup and uh, it's much better. And um, so that's what we're doing. So we have a dual feed setup now. The rear brakes basically just come off of here, like I said. And um, you could just come straight off of there and go to there, but I want line lock. And basically, once you put this line lock in, it's just a 12 volt solenoid. And what it does is when you want to do a fat, nasty burnout, what you do is you pull up to the, the burnout box or you know your buddy's house or whichever and um, you step on the brake pedal real hard and you build pressure in the system you pressurize the system right when you step on the pedal the the master cylinder pressurizes the system and the brakes lock right and then you push the button and you close that solenoid then you take your foot off the brakes and it releases the fluid from the back brakes like normal. But as long as that solenoid is closed, it's gonna hold pressure on the front. So your front brakes are locked. So when you wanna do a fat, nasty burnout, you can lock your front brakes and uh, release your rear brakes and uh, do a burnout as long as you want. And then uh, when you release that solenoid, you release that button the solenoid is going to release and the front brakes are going to release the pressure and uh, away you go. So that's kind of what we're aiming for. So anyways, we've got lots of brake lines to make. Um, I've got to mount this someplace out of the way somewhere and I got to run brake lines to it. So yeah, brake lines are not much fun. So I probably won't bore you to death with that. But anyways, you get the idea of what we're shooting for here. All right, the fat nasty burnout device, also known as a line lock, is mounted. It's gonna go right there. So, uh, oh, big thank you to Jason Snyder for that. <laughs> he uh, he left that on the front clip that I bought off of him for uh, off of his Nova. That's on uh, Oki right now, and so. Uh, Oki didn't need a line lock, so I took it off. It's been sitting in a drawer for a couple years, so uh, it's getting put to use now. And that's kind of the theme of the whole car, really. I mean, almost everything on this car, I'm trying my best to recycle parts and reuse parts and stuff, use stuff that I have laying around. So it's, uh, it's kind of why we're calling it down and dirty, because it's really... 
it's going to be put together with nothing but spare parts really for the most part okay now i can actually start making the brake lines and uh basically running them from the proportioning valve down to the rear brakes and then the front's going to go to the to the line lock so i can actually start making brake lines and fittings and couplers and basically what i'm going to do now is i'm going to play a game that i like to call how far can i get on this project without going to the store <laughs> so if i dig through my drawer of fittings and i chop up some scrap pieces of brake line and uh start bending it all up here i got a pretty straight piece right there that's good so I'll uh, I'll use what as much as I can for this game. So like I said, how far can I get on this project without going to the store? Because what happens is if you go to the store, it ends up costing you about 100, 150 bucks <laughs> every time. So uh, I'm gonna see how far I can get with this mess. And uh, yeah use what I can to see if I can finish this project. Otherwise, I gotta make a trip and uh, that gets expensive. All right, so what I do is I just kind of get the rough shape started, kind of the direction I wanna go, start putting my fittings on the ends and uh, you get a real nice fitting like that. If you got one of these tools right here, these things are awesome. They're kind of pricey. So if you can, borrow it from your friend, Jay. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> also, use these pliers. I like these. You can kind of grip the end of it and just kind of twist and kind of turn and kind of shape it as you go. So those pliers are pretty nice. Again, thanks, Jay. Well, this is what I came up with. <laughs> uh, I have failed in my quest to do this job without going to the store. <laughs> I need one coupler slash reducer. Dang it. That's how close I came to finishing this. It would have had breaks if it wasn't for that. So I am one fitting away from having a complete brake system. I don't know. What do you think? Is that too close to the header? I don't know. Maybe not. Well, I mean, it's only brakes. How important can it be? Anyways, I got close, but failed. So I will be making a trip to a store somewhere near here, hopefully. So I got within one fitting, one fitting away from having the brake system completed. So that's all right. I'll take, I'll take it. That's all right. My junk drawer came in handy. I had almost everything I needed. But uh, anyways, uh, I think that'll wrap it up for today. I'm gonna clean up and uh, take a shower. It is hot and kind of uh, humid today. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And we are gonna continue on on this Chevelle. Um, one day at a time, you know, one, one, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So we're going to keep going, but, uh, thank you so much for watching. And, uh, if you could give me a subscribe, a like, a comment, any of those, that would be super awesome. And I would appreciate it. And, uh, Sarah would appreciate it. And Oliver would appreciate it. And Scout will appreciate it. So anyways, thank you so much. And, uh, tune in next time.